Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 87 with me Craig Barton. Now a couple of months ago I wrote a blog post for TES called The Art of Teaching Antifunctional Maths where I got into, uh, got took a bit of stick for it because the point I was trying to make is that I think as maths teachers we're often forced to shoehorn real life into maths lessons where it doesn't really belong and kids say so when will we use this in real life and we I certainly am guilty in the past of coming up with the world's worst explanations to try and shoehorn real life into maths lessons where sometimes it doesn't belong. So have a read of my article and uh, <laughs> if you want to have a go at me on Twitter then, then feel free but hopefully you get the point that I'm trying to make that often some, some lessons and some topics don't particularly lend themselves to real life um, applications. However, I'm always a big fan of including real life maths whenever it's appropriate and this resource certainly shows that it can be completely appropriate and valuable and extremely useful. It's this wonderful resource, ISS Earth Circumference, which has been uploaded by a wonderful resource creator, Graham Coleman. So here is the uh, resource. It consists of a PowerPoint um, and some teacher notes and then a kind of student version to print out. So let's take a look at it here. Here's a PowerPoint, a wonderful picture to start off with. And essentially, that is all you need, that single slide. And the International Space Station orbits at an altitude of 250 miles. It travels at a speed of 17,500 miles an hour, and it completes one orbit of the Earth every 90 minutes, flying the circumference of the Earth. Now, flipping heck, that is quite open-ended and unstructured for a lot of students. But the point I would make here is that the way that this GCSE is going, and I've seen all the spe specimen papers and a few other documents, this is going to be the style of question that's going to be um, asked of a lot of our higher ability students towards the end of the paper and if they uh, if they don't get exposed to this as soon as possible they really are going to come a cropper so whilst your students may well protest i know mine certainly will be saying so i don't have a flipping clue what what you want me to do here they really do need to kind of develop that kind of that rigor and determination to battle the way through this so I'd be tempted to just leave that on the board for say five minutes, something like that, and uh, just say to the students, can anybody make a start at this? Or perhaps a further prompt, can anybody draw a diagram that helps capture that situation? And handily on slide three, there you do get a diagram. Um, and if students have, really don't have a clue after five minutes, then I think that's the next kind of level of support that you could give to them. Just a diagram that just helps them visualize that situation and puts it into, into a, a way that's probably slightly more accessible to the students but there's still a load of maths to go here now when I downloaded this resource I had a little uh, go at it myself and I'll tell you what it's quite it's quite tricky but fortunately there's some wonderful teacher notes available here so we have the key learning out outcome and again we it'll be no surprise there that this is all about uh, circles and pi and circumferences and so on but also linking in time but we get the key learning outcome and objectives unfortunately for me anyway we have a solution um, and a more structured method below here so look at all the math skills involved speed distance time circumference of a circle working backwards to find the radius and then subtracting that radius away and then using the radius again to find the circumference of the earth then you can convert that to kilometers because of course that's what the questions ask for so you get three really tricky skills involved there all brought together and again I know I'm sounding like a broken record here but that's the way the GCSE is going asking one question that have three completely different skills involved so absolutely crucial that students get their head around this so I'd be tempted to have these up my sleeve as, as a structured prompts so if after showing the kids the diagram if they didn't know where to go I just wander around and discreetly say what about using speed equals distance times time how's that going to help with this or then say to them what, how, how do you work out the circumference of a circle? How would that help you work out the radius of a circle? And so on. Just drip feeding this structure as opposed to saying to students, now do this, now do this, now do this. We need to get our kids to the stage where they can take on this stuff um, on their own. And I know that's a lot easier said than done, believe me. Um, but then this resource goes even further because there's lots of extensions we can ask. And again, those are, those are suggested by the, by the resource author. So work out the total surface area of the Earth. That's an interesting one to do. Because whilst, uh, whilst we can kind of fairly safely assume that the Earth's, Earth's spherical in shape, what about the kind of land, uh, the proportion of the Earth that's taken up by land compared to water? How are we going to bring that into play? The, the volume of the Earth, can we convert that to standard form? Loads of different stuff that can come into play just from this one little prompt question. 
and then it's really nice as well because if you work it out uh, using the calculations you get the uh, circumference of the earth to be 24,680 and the actual answer is 25,046 so again we can naturally we can say to the students what's the percentage error there where do they think that error comes from so just a wonderful resource that that's all it is, but you can get an entire lesson, if not a little bit more out of this. And you're all the time preparing your students for the demands of this new challenge in GCSE. Wonderful, wonderful resource. So there it is, um, ISS Earth Circumference by Graham Coleman. And I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.